Do not adjust your televisions. Britain's brightest daytime show is turning blue this morning as Lee, Simon, Duncan and Anthony give us an exclusive live performance of their new single, share their thoughts on gambling, best friends and UKIP, while the oldest pop tart in town, critic Kevin O'Sullivan's dropping by to talk telly. It's the right stuff. So what is going to be our last show of the week? I'm Matthew Wright. It's <laughs> to make way for these fellas here, ladies and gentlemen. Put them together for blue. Welcome to the show. Thank you. On entirety. <laughs> now, I know there's lots of you don't need telling this, but I'm going to tell you all the same. Duncan Lee, Simon, and Anthony—they got together 13 years ago. Went on to have three number one albums, 16 hit singles, including three number ones. Took a break, came back together again four years ago, but there hasn't been any new material until now, has there? And that, well, this is it. We've right. got your. Your return album, Brand Roulette. Album out now, it's called Roulette. So, why is it taking so long, first of all? <laughs> I think there was a big, a massive confusion on when we came back. We basically came back four years ago to, uh, to back one of our favourite charities, which was um, Save a London Child. Help London Child. Help London Child. So, um, we basically came together for that, but we all had different commitments. Like, Duncan was in the West End, yeah. we all had contracts and stuff like that. I was doing a solo deal, same as Lee. And, um, and then I think that just sort of sent out the wrong message. Uh, but that also was a catalyst for us to get back together and then um, we got back together a couple of years ago and decided to make it our own business and, and put out a new Well, album. this is, can you say, you make it your own business. I mean, you have set up your own label, you've mm -hmm. done all of this yeah, on we, your we own. completely own everything. Because uh, these days, because record labels are kind of becoming obsolete almost because they're no just shrinking and shrinking and shrinking. Um, we was with EMI and, uh, and <coughs> they actually now Universal has bought EMI. And um, we we was with EMI, and they brought us in and said, "Do you want to do a greatest hits?" And we was like, do "You know what? We really don't want to do a greatest hits. We want to we want to make a new album, fresh music. You know, we wrote One Love, All Rise, and Fly mm. By. So they said no, and we said <laughs> yes, and, we, um, <laughs> and then we decided to go and make our own record label and do it ourselves. And Andrew, you were telling me uh, before we came on air that you actually you, you've all been to business school yeah, we went as to, well. Yeah, we went to business classes um, every every day. Um, some of us were there earlier than others. Um, <laughs> the trains joking. were late. The trains. <laughs> but it really, really taught us a lot because it was, it was like going back to school. It was, we had our notes, our pay, pen, paper, and, and it was just like just learning all fi facts and figures that we sort of didn't know about when we was 18, mm. 19 years mm. old. We were pretty much wet behind the ears the first time around. We well, I mean, this is anything. the classic I know. boy band sort of scenario. It was. A lot of groups. Is that, a lot of groups. You know, you get burned to some degree by the business. I mean, mm. to be honest, uh, you know, it's, it's kind, of, kind of bad, really, but we would get up in the morning, there'd be a, a car outside waiting for us, we'd get in it, and we'd say to the driver, where are we going today? He'd be like, oh, you're coming to do the right stuff. You turn up, there's a hair and makeup artist there, there's somebody with your outfits to wear, and that was kind of pretty much what we knew. And then, yeah. we, you know, off in a car to the next place. Yeah. And, and, and then someone comes around and gives you the bill. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we didn't even know about the bill. <laughs> we, didn't know that. we just we didn't thought know there was that. a magic person paying for everything. Yeah. We didn't realise <laughs> it was us. <laughs> I remember the most is when they used to sit us down and they'd, and they'd make us sign contracts, mm. or not make us, but give us contracts, but they'd time it really well when we were starving hungry. <laughs> <laughs> so they'd be like, they'd be like <laughs> there's a bacon sandwich. <laughs> and then we'd be like, Arr! and they'd be like, and there's your contract. <laughs> so, don't so, read the small ha print. <laughs> ha happily free, happily free. And I mean, yeah. there's so many questions being shouted in my ear at the moment. Are you going on the road with this roulette album? Yeah, yeah. yeah. we've got yeah. our first big gig in just under 10 years tonight at the Shepherd's Bush Empire. Oh, so, so uh, sold out. Yeah, sold out, so we're well excited about Nervous it. Nervous or...? Nervous, yeah, 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 sweet hands. Well, it's new, it's new blue, you know, we just had to learn new routines because we didn't want to do stuff that we did, like, back in 2001, <laughs> or, or, like, dads at a wedding, so... <laughs> we're, trying, we're trying to be all fly and all that. Like, what about, no, what about yeah. the title, Roulette? I mean... It's because we took a gamble. It's like, we, we decided to make our own record label and do it ourselves, and we thought it was a big, a big massive gamble for us to, to put everything... I mean, we've put our own money into it, we've put every single thing we have yeah. into this album, and I, that's why we called it Roulette. Yeah, even doing that stuff, obviously, you know, coming back to the Eurovision, I remember coming on the show, Matthew, and you saying, is it right that you guys did it? You know, everything we've done has been a gamble, and as a, you know, it really has taken it its well, time, I'm sure but we're so happy off. I'm sure we, yeah. we, we were lucky enough to work with people like Red One, who's one of the biggest producers in the world, did Lady Gaga, Jennifer mm. Lopez, he does 
Enrique, Pretty everybody, and he's pr pr produced half his album. And it's a great album. It's a fantastic album. We're so proud of it. You've, you also, I mean, made, and it's a difficult jump. You've made it quite successfully from boy band to man band for, for one of a, a man band. Well, you know, <laughs> man band. Boys to man. <laughs> what, do you, what, do you, what do you think with, with, with all the experience you've garnered over the years? What do you think of the new crop of, of boy bands coming through One Direction? Great. I love yeah. One Direction. I love, it. Yeah. love One Direction. I think they're amazing. I think they're a great group. They're, not so much my music, but I think they're they're, they're a band that led. <laughs> Lads love to love, you know what I mean? They're they're, they're cool, but I, you know, I like R and B kind of soul music. But um, you know, I think they're a great group. I, they think, they're, I think they're stars. UK you know, they're... talent, fly the flag around yeah. the world, on, representing boys. the UK. Cool. I think that's what it's all about. And yeah. you know, them boys are smacking it all over the world. They're massive in America. It's UK talent bringing it home. You know, we are the biggest. Um, country for music if you look back at the Beatles God, and all these sure. acts you know the most creative we yeah. are and, and it's a shame like the Eurovision song because this the, the song uh, the show about music we always come at the bottom well we'll come, we'll come to that in a moment but uh, it's worth mentioning of course that Blue caused a bit of a stir when they rocked up towards the end of the big reunion show <laughs> uh, all those bands uh, groups like the Honeys Atomic Kit and Liberty X they've been getting over their differences for one last show and then Blue turned up <laughs> <laughs> how do you feel about completely trampling over all of us <laughs> I'm stupid. It should be really bad. No. <laughs> Just concentrate on yourselves. Don't worry about us. We're all right. We're cool. Very yeah. briefly, I mean, did, 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 did you feel? I mean, because they all I'm the, the other bands are having real. <laughs> They were That's having the a, lo a lot of issues, I think, the other bands were having, and you rocked up all sort of tightened together. And, uh, <laughs> it was... Was, it, was it unfair on the others? Or not? <laughs> well, I mean, it's just like any TV programme. You get comfortable, don't you? You know, you get to know... You, you, you kind of become a family, and then all of a sudden, new kids turn up, and it's like, put them in the corner. And, and But, you know, we, we get on with everybody. It's all about the music at the end of the day, do you know what I mean? We, That's we, what we enjoy. We just like having a laugh. We're not, we're not we, you know, it's like being, since we got back together, because now we know what we're doing, and it, but it's almost, we're still having fun. Yeah. And, and when people will see us, and we, the way you see us having a giggle with each other, it's we have not, enough, it's what you, 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 we are like that. And it's like, like, camera as, as yeah, well. exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, and the thing is, none of us can get the ump. If one of us get the ump, <laughs> oh, they get ribbed so bad. <laughs> it's terrible. Now, you, um, you almost get the ump for getting the ump. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? The lads are going are to treat us to an exclusive live performance of their new single, Hurt Lovers, a little later in the show. But uh, keep you going until then. Here's Blue bringing the house down at last month's big reunion gig. <laughs> Fans are going off on a big reunion tour. Yeah. Are they, you on it or today. not? Yeah, they're going, they're going today. today. Good luck, so you're not on it. We are. Good luck. We are. We joined them on Sunday in Newcastle, okay. but we've got our own concert tonight in London, as, as the boys were saying. And uh, then we join them in, uh, in Newcastle and off to Liverpool, Glasgow, Dublin, Bournemouth, all over the place Oi. with it. Yeah. What are you doing, what, mate? What, what are you like? doing, Come on, mate? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. What are you doing? <laughs> I'm making a blue movie. Oh. Ah. <laughs> Now, what about uh, the years off? Now, I, you had quite a hard time. You were forced to end up working on this show. Uh, and, I mean, there were headlines saying you're homeless and stuff like that. Yeah. Well, I wasn't homeless, um, but I, I, lost, I lost a lot of money. I, I lost, you know, near, I owed the uh, tax man near, near on, like, 600 grand. Because um, as Dunk was saying, we didn't know what just was do going what on. do Starbucks do, just make some coffee and disappear? <laughs> yeah, well, cost the coffee. Cost the coffee. Cost the coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the founder. I'm the founder. You are the founder. Yeah, I am. Yeah, yeah. It's a long chain. But you know, <laughs> but, you know <laughs> I, I'm glad I learnt my lesson then um, because I thought Blue was going to last forever. And then when we called it a day, I was like sitting at home and just thinking, well, what else do I do? And you know, the tax man come to me and said, look, you owe this. And I went through an IVA and, and then I'm all right now. I've come good. through, through good, it. Good, good, good. Now, I'm on the got lots of fans in the audience. Kirsty, anyone want to ask we a have, question? I've got a fan here. It's Lucy. Have you got a question for the boys? Yeah. Um, my question is, was the big reunion, or has the big reunion, been like a huge platform for you to come back on? Wow, massively. Good and question. Because I've noticed like your fan base has just like gone out the roof 
Yeah. Our, our greatest hits went straight into the top five. Um, off the Just off the back of that. Yeah, after yeah. the first episode. Yeah, in iTunes. And then, and then um, you know, with this album now, it's, you know, the fans have been kind of like woken up. Because a lot of our fans are now grown up with us. I was 16 when I got in the band. And, um, you know, a lot of the fans now, was like, like us, are, are, have families or have children. And, um, you know, they've kind of been reawoken with this show and, and kind yeah. of the nostalgia of, like, all being connected with, like, All Rise and One Love. And they're like, oh, so many great memories from when I was a child and 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 I think that's how they've reconnected with us with this new album and now the album's doing really well so Do you yeah it has done fact well. Go on. 11 years ago this week our first album will rise was number one in the album charts. See, nothing is going. Just, I'm going to get older because everything seems like yesterday. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the that. first bicycle, the first yeah. car. Yeah. And when I said yeah. that on Twitter yesterday, album. some girl said to me, "Oh my God, I was three. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I was I said, like, "Hey, I'm really old." I want to do one more quick question uh, before we go through, which is uh, Simon and Anthony have both been in the jungle. Uh, Liam Duncan, you tempted? Would you? Could you? I think you'd love it. Do you reckon? Yeah. Yes, go on. Maybe. I think I'll, I think they could I think they should do it. I, mean, oh, I was talking to Christine about yeah. it. We were sat having her, um, her makeup done and we were talking about it, weren't we? We were. <laughs> so, yeah, go on, do so, it. Size never forgiven me. <laughs> I phoned him up. And he said, you think I should do the, do, do the jungle? Yeah, bro. It was the best thing I ever did, man. You'd be good at it. Got there. Hated it. <laughs> <laughs> the one day, I, was, I woke up and I was like, I'm so hungry. <laughs> Take me home. <laughs> I need some rice and peas, <laughs> man. I tried to phone him when he got evicted. I tried to phone him when he got evicted. Boop. Sight. Boop. <laughs> is, is that? Don't Boop. talk to me, man. <laughs> right, right. Now, order on the panel. Let's tell you about this morning's show. We'll hear from you on that. Take plenty of calls before it's over to blue for the rest of the morning's headlines. And then I want to know. It's at five right, sir. Duncan thinks you're beautiful. Sorry? Duncan Aww. thinks you're beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> after the break, uh, Ken Clark thinks they're clowns, but after last night's local election results, do UKIP now look like contenders? 027 173 that's the number for your thoughts. We'll hear what the panel thinks first. And no, a UKIP candidate, Alex Wood, didn't win his ward of Blackmore Vale in Somerset, but he did beat both Labour and the Lib Dem candidates. Uh, welcome back to The Right Stuff with Alexis Connor and Christine Hamilton and Blue. We've got Lee with us for this phone. Uh, he's going to be... Uh, <laughs> Alexis, clowns or serious contenders? What do you make? Is, is this UK have, have finally got the sort of foot in the door? Uh, I know that they're, they're an emerging party and they sort of need time to think about all the other... I mean, to fight who exactly? And why, why do you need to spend all that money there? The... Mm. I don't okay. think most young people that I've spoke to don't really know anything about UKIP. I see my... um, there's going to be a huge establishment machine set up which will actually... Uh, your feelings uh, on the results so far? Is it a protest vote? Is it more than a protest vote? <laughs> it's not approved about... Lee? Immigration uh, and, and concerns about immigration. I mean, the one thing that we can say about UKIP is they've not been afraid to grasp that a particular nettle. A yeah. lot of the mainstream or the bigger parties, oh, you know, it's, they, they, they're scared, I think, perhaps, of, of coming up with a strong view. Is it an important, is it a general election winning policy, immigration, tighter control? I don't know. I mean, I think the, the thing is about immigration, it's like, I don't know, you go to these countries and it is, is it, the, the quality of life we have here is amazing. <clears throat> And like, I don't know, would, if you was living there, would you come here? I would be probably very tempted, That's yes. I mean. But so, then I mean, it, I, it, I think it, anyone that lives here can take it for granted and then kind of condemn people coming here. But if it's their, you know, we're in, we're in the EU, it's their right to come here. Yep. So why should we then condemn that if, if it's... Well, because when we well, joined the EU, the only vote we ever had was whether or not we wanted to have closer economic ties. And mm. then we never had another say over everything else that followed. Yeah, no, no British citizens yeah, but it's voted just, I mean, for, I'm talking for... about a human right and, and uh, the quality of life for a, of a human mm. right. So, I don't know, I, I, I kind of, I'm, I'm, a, I'm more pro for people coming into the country as long as they're working yeah, yeah, yeah. and well. paying their taxes. And then you know, and doing this. If they if they come in, take money, and then take the money out of the country, yeah. then I don't. I'm, I'm not so much well, in favour of it. But just, okay. just to clarify, kind of, UKIP is not anti-immigration in any shape or form. What what it wants to do is control our Absolutely. own borders. So we say who can come in. Sorry, you, I you think want to was, move on. What was that thing that there was? It was said that. Um, you have there, there was someone I can't because I'm not sorry I'm not massively into politics like but you, there was something that was said you're normal that, that, yeah <laughs> that, um, that, that you have six months if you if you haven't got a job 
If oh, you the, come into these the country, are some of the ideas being bad. Yeah, I think that's at the a moment. great idea. You come okay. into the country, you get six months. If you haven't, if you haven't got a job and you're just coming and living off benefits, then you get deported back yeah. to your own country. Do you I know, think okay. that's okay. Good some, some, some people. Go okay, on. Right, right, rapid okay, well we can carry, we'll carry on after the break. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, when we're going to hear from you, you're calls are nothing but after these ads. Thank you very much. Welcome back to Friday's show, a blue special with uh, Alexis Comer and Christine Hamilton, our special guest, the band Blue. Lee's with us now for this phone-in part, and he's going to have the rest of the headlines for you shortly, including more on Stuart Hall pleading guilty to sex offences and the anger of anti-smoking groups as the government delays its decision on plain packaging. And uh, Lee, I mean, the Lib Dems are probably scared of everybody, scared of their own shadows. <laughs> they, lost their, they lost their deposit yeah. shields. <laughs> Uh, and Lee thought uh, you keep a right to look at the issue of immigration, to grasp the nettle. But what, I wonder, are people saying at home? They're telling me what I want to hear. What do you want to hear, Jean? What do you want to hear? Yeah, I'm not and can't find jobs. Mm. You know, I just think to my people who come and sponge but, off. Don't we but have we... our own people that sponge off us? Well, th I mean, th that's... So, so I mean, I, and we're enough, all part yeah. of the EU, right? So if we, we have enough people that go, I don't want to work, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have more children, I'm going to keep on taking as much um, off I can, because yeah. actually when I go to the job centre, they actually tell me not to work. Yeah. But do you know... So, th right? Yeah. Yeah, no, no, you're, you're better off staying on benefits because you'll get more money. So, I mean... No, you're absolutely right. But what, what some of the people are doing, who the, the EU immigrants who come here, they are actually, from day one, they are sending home child benefit to maybe four or five children back in their home country who have never set foot in this country and possibly never no, will set I, foot I, in I this country. With that. It's, it is, it's, it's nonsense. But you also, still, on the other hand, you have other people that come here and want to make yep. a new life. Yep. They want to make a family and they want to... I mean, but a lot I of our guess culture, the, but there's a lot of people that live here who have families that from years ago came here Absolutely. and now have, uh, you know, have, have flourished in this country. Yeah, your family would well, have come here from... Well, we've got two Greeks anyway. I, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I wouldn't have been here uh, exactly. had it not been for the no. EU. And I think, I think that... that and also, it's, n it's not just a UKIP issue. I think a lot of parties Absolutely. are looking at Absolutely. immigration. We're trying to make it seem that UKIP are the only people who okay. are looking at forgive, immigration. Forgive me, yep. forgive me for jumping in. I just want to hear as many calls as... Um, and the interesting thing I would like uh, you, you, uh, look, to look at was the... Uh, you know, the biggest section of voters we have. But are older people stuck in their ways exactly. a little bit as well? well it's, uh, <laughs> yeah, but surely... No, we're not. Surely... Go on, Brian, say again. Surely the future of the country are young people. Yeah, that's what, that was my point. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. And also, and also, what about the multicultural support? What, what about the multicultural support? How many, I mean, the UKIP supporters... <laughs> I've got to jump in. We, we've, we've got to go to the break. Just before we do, Lee was nervous about how he would be perceived during this fight. How did he do, Rest of Blue? Did he do all right? Yeah. They loved you. <laughs> After the break... Anthony Costas here to bring you the rest of the headlines, including record numbers of women under 50 with breast cancer and great news for pop fans as the curtain comes down on the Spice Girls. All the life-enhancing details after a few more ads. <laughs> Oh, very kind. Thank you very much. Welcome back to Friday's show with Alexis Conran, Christine Hamilton and special guest Blue, whose new album Roulette is out now and the lads will be performing uh, their new single, Hurt Lovers, a little later. So to come this fine day, we're asking if gambling, but right now uh, we're going over to uh, Anthony for the papers. It's like old times. It is, mate, it is. <laughs> 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 Go on, they missed it. Do it again, then. Come Hello, on. welcome to the right stuff. I'm Matthew Wright. Hey, welcome. OK, <laughs> let's have a bit of silence. OK, pages four and five of the Express. No, no this is not a laugh This is serious. This no. is serious. Page four and five of the Daily Express, uh, the headline is A Vile Predator. Child sex shame of TV's Stuart Hall. Mm. Now, um, he does face jail. He has been in court and he has attacks on nearly 13 terrified young girls and the youngest is set to be... She was nine years old. Mm. Um, the first case, so to speak, was in 1968 and the last case was 27 years ago in 1986. It's... Um... I think it's disgusting. It is disgusting. I'm still kind of furious over the fact that well, just a couple of weeks back he was describing these accusations as being pernicious, callous and cruel, which we now know to be total lies. Mm. Um, and I think it's probably worth mentioning 
uh, that although he won't be resentenced for this, lying on file is an accusation, an allegation of rape, which hasn't yeah. been tested in court. Uh, uh, but uh, so therefore the sentence won't reflect that at all. But uh, yeah, it's a pretty it does. shameful story. It's disgusting. It really Absolutely is. disgusting. Yeah. Yeah. Coming on to the same sort of story, page six, seven of the mail, the BBC bosses knew all about his um, antics. Well, this is the claim. This is the claim. And it's, well, you know, I'm going to read a little bit here. BBC managers turned a blind eye to Stuart Hall's regular practice of luring young girls into his dressing room, and it was, it was claimed last night. In an echo of the Jimmy Savile sex scandal, a former mm. studio worker claimed Hall took a string of young girls into the BBC Manchester, sometimes describing them as his nieces. So he was luring them in. Yeah, I, I mean, I just we just remind for the fact that they are claims. They are claims. They've not been tested or, or investigated. Obviously, you know, the, the BBC's copped a lot of flack over the way, well, over what Jimmy Savile was getting up to uh, for but, decades. But um, why why didn't they ever say anything? I don't understand these people that worked for the, for the big companies never ever said anything. If I saw something going on, I'm the first to go and say something looks. But a bit if you gosh. remember at the time. Both Stuart Hall and Jimmy Savile were mega stars. I mean, uh, you know, uh, it's a knockout. It was one of the biggest shows on yeah. television. Uh, uh, I'm just. I, I don't speak Go on, Christine. I well, I, well I, I'm, I don't know the answer, and I don't know that any of us know the answer yet. I'm not sure that I've heard that they were young girls going into his what was called the medical room. They were they were uh, uh, of girls age. of age. Yes, that, that's as I understand yeah. it. But I mean, I don't know. But yeah. Yeah. he was obviously. Anyway, yeah, it's anyway. horrendous. Okay, let's move on. <coughs> okay, on, the, on a lighter note, uh, front page of the Sun, uh, Mr. Jose Mourinho, he is coming back to Chelsea. The special one. The special one. <laughs> Do you know, I, th I, think, I think most people <coughs> have probably guessed that about three or four months ago when he suddenly appeared and was just photographed non stop in Britain. It was obviously something was going on. But, but right, Matthew, is that real front page news? I mean, I love my football, don't get me wrong, but the well, special one coming back, I don't know. I, I, I think there's more. Who do you support? Spurs. <laughs> 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 and therein, therein lies your comment, I suppose. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't know. I mean, the special one's coming back. He was good for the Premier League. Being an, uh, he's also, a massive he's, football he's, he's fan. Got, he's mean, got a great character. He's, he's a great character. He's got real style. And Mrs Wright thinks he's the most fanciful man on the yeah. planet as well. So, and, yeah, yeah. and he is a special one. Yeah. I like him. Uh, and this and is, is, I mean, the Sun's calling a world exclusive, because let's be fair, there has been no official no. Uh, word on this just yet. Well, so. another channel the other day cut his interview short. Because yes. they were running over. He was just about was to just say, about and I'm going to go back to... Crystal that's Palace! All got, that's all we've got time for. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's all we've got five time for. Yeah. Cut him so, uh, okay. Chelsea fans, Mourinho might be coming back. Okay. The, sun, the Sun know what their readers like, don't they? So, you know, no, it's they're a pretty I, successful I paper. Yeah. One last one. On one last page. one. Page three of the Mirror. Oh, by the way, me and the boys are in the, the Mirror today as well. Ah, so you're in all the papers today. I've seen all of them. Every single one. Thank you, everyone. It's nice that we're talking about it on this show. Viva Not Forever is the headline. The Spice yeah. Girls show is over with a five million pound loss. The Spice Girls, it's, the Aww. girls are set to lose one million each after the uh, show has been a massive, massive flop, and it's going to end in June. I haven't seen it. So I don't yeah, know. I could see, I could see the tears I've running down your eyes, Can you? Matthew. <laughs> Dunk's seen it. Must be that sliced onion I put under the desk <laughs> earlier. Uh, Dunk's seen it. Was it good? It wasn't the best musical I saw, but you know it was about the music. The music was good. I like, yeah, I like singing along to it, and you know it was my daughter. I took my daughter, who's eight, and she loved it. Yeah, I mean, I, thought, I, I must admit, I'd seen. I mean, things like the Madness, their musical, Our House, that folded pretty quickly, really which nice. I thought was surprising. Was I thought it'd do really well. You know, Britain, great British band. But I think Rod Stewart's one that went down pretty quickly. Yeah. But, but Mamma Mia is flying. Yeah, yeah, yeah and, and yeah. obviously Thriller is, is still going yeah. to this day. But I think when you're a massive, massive band like ABBA. I mean, I'm not saying the Spice Girls were never massive. They were a massive band, but I think their music maybe it was much more of its. On. I think it's it just was, really of its time, it, yes. wasn't it? But uh, also, Mamma uh, Mia had, had possibly one of the most successful films. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's what I mean. Ever. I don't think Spice World did too bad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that really was pants. Uh, <laughs> I think we can say that. That's me over. Nicely done, Anthony. Thank Christine, much, what do you have? What have I got? Well, um, this is this is serious, no risk, but every daily drink raises the risk of the condition for women, even those who are careful to stay within the government's, government's limit. There is no safe limit of breast cancer, so okay. wow. think about it. Um, now, this is... Uh, the inverted commas means allegedly. Allegedly. Right. Um, he's a street entertainer from Western Supermare. He says, 
He's been a victim of the system. He said 12 years about I don't blame you. I don't blame now, you. Now, this is, this is just, this is so fun. I love this. I mean, don't you love the WI? Do you deal with what the WI are? They're old for old people. Women's Institute. This is not for old people. They'll <laughs> shoot you for that. <laughs> WI? Women's Institute. Yeah, yeah, Women's Institute. Well, it's for, for people women. Over, over 25. Is it? Are you going to yeah, be over 25? Yeah, old, yeah. Is that no, what you're you having. <laughs> <laughs> you just got to be good at making jam, haven't you? <laughs> this, is, this is the WI down in... He thought it was a scream. He thought it was a... Can, can I just very quickly... Have we, I want to tell you, when I first met these boys... Can I just Go get on, yeah. I think it's quite funny. It was in 2001, and it was on the big breakfast. Yeah. They probably won't remember, because I was an old lady then. <laughs> I was blindfolded, and what I had to do was I had to feel them all, and I had to say which one was which, and do you know... <laughs> yeah, it was fabulous. I took as long as I could. <laughs> <laughs> What was it that gave them away? Oh, I couldn't, <laughs> I, I couldn't possibly comment. I wish I thought of that. We could have, we could have revisited it Do you know, today. I had such a fun life. <laughs> Oh, you do indeed. Uh, Alex, what have you got for us? Uh, I have got... Now, I've got to tread carefully here, because oh. many, many people have stumbled on this. Um, the Health Secretary, Jeremy Hunt... Yep, well done. ..has... <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Has, has, has not pressed forward the packaging proposed warning and I suppose the just the cigarette brand, but yeah. no no packaging, no yeah. colours, no logos, no nothing. Because they think 42, 43 or something like that. Every great idea. Is it someone who has maybe a more comfortable background? So it can legs the home question on for free or, you know, can he change? It's like music, isn't it? Yeah. 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 It's why should you ask somebody to provide a service without paying them? Yeah. Uh, this is a strange story. Page nine of the mail. Um, He's been called racist. Yes. Yeah. Uh, well, because apparently... Is he? Yes, yes. yes. Oh, I'm sorry. I haven't got my glasses on. There you on. go. No, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I understand now. Yeah. It? yeah. But then again, this is sort of says more about the whole Facebook culture and what you put mm. on there. People are going to learn that nothing's private. Nothing. No. Uh, the moment you put something on Twitter and Facebook, you should be prepared to see it in the newspaper. Again, how many of us make jokes that are, yeah. would be probably inappropriate? You know, he's, the culture is in Facebook and Twitter. Yeah, but as soon as you put it on Facebook, you're publishing it. So exactly. Yeah, it's like and tipsy whipsy from the telly yeah. It's nothing to do with that. It's just they wear slip-ons. I, I think not met enough shoelaces. I think I found Einstein that. couldn't tie shoelaces at I've all. I've got a weird way of tying shoelaces. I do it twice. I loop it twice, don't I, boys? And I just... Was it OCD? OCD. Yeah. OCD. Yeah. Is that yeah. what it is? Because mm. yeah. you're worried they're going to fall yeah. off. Yeah, I'm yeah. dyslexic because I, I said yeah. ACD and he's OCD. <laughs> 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 Do you know what I mean? Dyslexic. Before you said it, you're right. So it's true. I mean, Lee, it really is. He, he's heavily dyslexic, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, well, we're going to take a break. You can write a good song, though. <laughs> you can write a good song, that's for sure. That's for sure. Listen, we've got to take a break, after which we're asking if gambling could be good for children. Yeah, Dan Walton uh, won Teacher of the Year 2009 for his unconventional approach to mathematics. He would bet pupils real money, albeit 10p or 20p, if they could answer his questions, and apparently he's now a millionaire. Joke. Uh, thank you for choosing the right stuff this morning with Alexis Common, Christine Hamilton and our special guest Blue. Duncan's with us uh, for this phone -in. A little later, Simon's going to tell us what he thinks of the head teacher who thinks best friends are bad news. A kid should have lots of good friends instead. 027 173 is the number you need. I think I can see why. Can you? Today, but I know Alexis, your experience was very different. Maybe you can tell us a bit about your experience, and then what you think about this idea of gambling My being experience, good for kids. Uh, which most gambling addicts I have met, they will admit, admit to having committed a crime at some point to fund their addiction. Okay, kids with kids, gambling could be good. Could be good for kids. Could liven up maths lessons. Okay, he, here's my opinion on that. The same way that they're introduced to alcohol and drugs at a very young age. To be from, I think kids need to be educated about gambling. Gambling is an entertainment. It's not a way to make money. Can it help with? You're going to be thinking about the game and the money. And as what, like your person said on your Facebook page, you give gambling us a card with trick later. A ca I've card got trick 50 later. Fifty quid riding on this. Yeah, right. <laughs> I've got a little poker game with the blue boys <laughs> happening in the green room <laughs> later on. Well, funny enough, because you you're quite keen, aren't you, Doug? Yeah, you know what? It's it's. Really bad, and it is. It, it can become an addiction. It can. But it doesn't affect everybody badly. Lots of people have no. lots of fun. Yeah, I, I guess that. But I think for children, it's bad. You know, really? I, I started off playing um, bingo when I was younger, and I used to love it. Going with my family, you know, the dib dobber pens. I used to think it was brilliant. You know, fun. I didn't I actually understand the connotations of actually losing 
money. And right. as I've got older, you know, I've been in a situation before where, as the boys will tell you, I've been on a fruit machine and I've just got to put another 20 quid in and my money's gone. I go, oh, can you just lend me a, just lend me a 10? I've got to put more. It's going to win. It's going to win. And they go, they go stop, don't. And you do have that mindset of going, it's going to come in, it's going to come in, and you just keep going, keep okay, going, no, keep I, going. I, I can get that, but I can think to myself sitting in math lessons, going out of my mind with boredom, not really feeling in, engaged with what was going on, not really understanding it. And I'm sitting, little math teacher sat there and said, right, here's a roulette table, there, there, there's you know, X number of numbers, the odds are this, and you can actually get something tangible that you can actually think, OK, and, yeah. you know, what, 14 to 1, and just getting a feel of odds of risk yeah. of playing it could have some well, benefit. To be honest with you, sorry, but to be honest with you, if somebody sat you down and explained to you the odds at roulette you and what you're going to get paid, <laughs> yeah. you shouldn't gamble, because basically the odds are this and you're going to get a less than the odds. And, so, and the house always wins. Yeah. You know, so. Well, then maybe, then maybe that's, a, that's, a, that's a positive to actually to do, yeah. you might think twice about doing it. Well, having said that, I went and did my GCSEs and I got a D in my maths because I was rubbish. And then I thought, well, I better retake it a year later when I was in my A-level y- years to go back and yeah, do yeah, my, yeah. my maths GCSE again. And I got an E. <laughs> <laughs> I ended up doing worse. <laughs> Sounds like Claire Ryan with maths, isn't it? <laughs> Chrissy. Yeah, well, gambling, it's like so many things, isn't it? You know, as long as it's in- gambling is daft, of course you've got to learn about risk. And most children learn gambling in a mild form within the home, don't they? It's everywhere, isn't it? Online gambling. But if people yeah. understood. Risk without, without, without going into gambling. Yeah. But I do think it's start learning about gambling. And what it, because it's everywhere. You've even got, you know, Cricket the Shane Warne, is, he's the face of, yeah. uh, and, and, you know, he's got a million followers on Twitter, for instance, and, you know, people think, oh, well, he's doing it, and yeah. I'm a fan of his, so I'm going to do it as well. So, I mean, I think if you're over 18, you should be able to have, you know, responsible for your own actions, but under 18, I still think, you yeah. know, you shouldn't be doing it. Okay. Well, and you should never, ever, ever gamble something that you can't afford to lose. I mean, you know, I, the only time I ever gamble is... Casinos. Right. Um, and I got really, really... In terms of your son, Alison, I mean, uh, was he... Progressed from that. Alison, do you think if, if he was educated at school about the risks, no. do you think it would have changed things for him or not? No, I don't, because I still think, at the end of the day, I think if you've got an addictive personality, you can't yeah. change that. Okay. And I think gambling is such an addiction. It's like smoking, drinking, get on with math is a good thing. Um, my, in my experience as a child, with my small amounts of change. No, but if... They... Losing, not losing the money. They just yeah, like yeah, yeah. win a game. But you, don't children kind of... Do you, do you value money as a young child? Why don't you get them to gamble their bike? And then maybe that... <laughs> and then maybe... <laughs> And then maybe you know, there's a TV show that. in that somewhere, isn't it? Yeah, Making sure yeah, yeah. Gamble, gamble your skateboard. Gambling a bike is not actually um, learning how, how funny, is it? And, um, you know, uh, that, that's part of what yeah. I think um, helps us as children, as we were learning, you know, how to count money and the value of money. Yeah, and, but then and that's it's gam- play gam- Monopoly. Yeah, play Monopoly, yeah, man. Monopoly. Yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, good. We as well. Tell you what, you should lose. Monopoly be banned then for, you, for kids. Wow! Well, you know, <laughs> another phone in, another yeah. phone in. I tell you what, if you lost your bite, you'd learn a lesson about gambling pretty quickly. Would, I reckon, yeah. Catherine. Thank you. Yeah. Um, we played lots of travel games um, that included roulette, and the mixture between the two maybe taught me to stay away from it. I mean, the most I do is maybe a pound place pot in the horses. <laughs> okay. Oh, no, I mean, I mean, it's, it's interesting. You mentioned Monopoly straight away, and I think maybe Duncan. The next time you're here, we'll do that. Is Monopoly evil? <laughs> I used to love playing Monopoly. Yeah. I still love yeah. it now. Yeah. It's always ending rows at my kids, house. Kids playing a bit <laughs> yeah. of roulette, Monopoly, whatever it is within, that's, everybody does that. Yeah. That's how you learn. It doesn't need to be taught in schools. Okay. Um, thanks very much for that uh, on the panel, particularly you, Alexis, and uh, everybody at home. After the break, we're asking, though, if best friends are bad news. Would little kids, well, we're talking sort of primary school age kids, be better off? <laughs> Welcome back. It's our last phone of the week where Alexis, of course, you swap gambling for, uh, well, card tricks, really. Yeah. yeah? Uh, Christine and Simon from Blue, and you guys at home are going to tell us if best friends are bad news. <laughs> what do you think, Simon? No, I agree. I, I agree that, you know, I don't, I believe in the best friend. Did I, you have a best friend? Um, yeah, I've, I've, I'm, I'm, I'm the same. I've still, I'm still in contact with my school friends. Um, that you know uh, that we have a very very close relationship. I think it keeps you grounded. Um, it's always good to have someone there that can encourage you as well. What if? I think it's probably unlikely. What if you'd ended up in primary school with no best friend? That you were the bloke that the boy that the others didn't mix with. 
you might then start I, have a, a, I, have I, a different I, I, view. I, like, going back to the comment, I actually think it really depends on the school because I think it's a teacher's job to actually spot these things that that's are going on and, and that's why I think you've got to let kids be kids you can't tell a kid what to do because they're going to feel what they feel and I think you know kids are free spirited and you should allow that you know I really take the kid... point that it's actually that means I mean you've always finished the phone in for me because I think you're right like, teachers you monitor and look at you how monitor. it's going that's and their job. make sure that you bring the kids in that are that yeah. are ostracized that's right um I find yeah. it I mean I find it impossible Christina <sighs> Well, I can't, I can't quite understand how they can differentiate between really good friends and, no, uh, I mean, and best friends. Of course you want to encourage children to mix with everybody, but there's, some, there's a very special bond with that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I had a, and I can remember the day now when she... And she, uh, you know, she was, why not have a best friend? I've just got a well, best because, friend because, now. I mean, the, the, it's yeah. going to happen to you further on down yeah, the road. Yeah. It's, and I mean, it's, I, I dumped a best friend as yeah. well, so... You but know, I, I, I can understand that if you say in a class of 35 or whatever you have mm. today... Saying earlier, Parents and teachers together. Yeah. They put them in different groups and something to also We in it here, but you could say they're all good friends and, and with friends We've sometimes social, we fall out, sometimes we don't. Maybe friends. maybe yeah. it just calms down the emotion that it's not the end of the I, world. I, I really think it's being blown out of proportion. Same I think, here. I think this is being blown out of proportion. And I mean it's a headline, but And kids don't kids don't pick the terms of Just don't, for example, say, right now who's best friend with <laughs> <laughs> I think that was his best mate. <laughs> <laughs> just, so, he's got this vision, he's walking along the road and he's he just <laughs> fell off a cliff or something. He's, just, he's gone. Bobby is gone. Do we have another? Right at the beginning of the show, which is it's just much... And it's nice to say that it's actually happened. To the individual OK, I can see Duncan has his hands up. Well, what's up, Duncan? Say, I've had the same three BFFs, as we call it, best friends forever, <laughs> for 14 years now. Are these boys? Yeah. 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 Oh, we're all holding hands under the desk. <laughs> I feel left out. <laughs> <laughs> we can join our game. We're all best friends. Come best right. friends over With that, we're going to say goodbye to the panel. Simon, Duncan, Lee and Anthony, you've got a few minutes to prepare for your live number. Yeah. Ladies yeah. and gentlemen, let's give it up for your panel. Thank you very much.